Okay, next clock for us to look at is another. It's an old one. Quail cuckoo. And, uh, and the chains on these things feel like they weigh a ton. Okay, first thing we've got to do is. hands off. Somebody put a piece of brass on the back and put a bunch of pins through it to hold it together. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad shape, but it's all right. Now we gotta undo the cuckoo doors. Just bend that pin straight up. Pull the pin out of the door. Wire out of the doors. And then we should close these up. They don't beat up the doors. thing to do is got to take the bellows out. There are three of them of course. Two for the cuckoo and one for the quail. Now let's do this. Let's get these hooks and loops off the chain. Just to uh, get these off, is you just bend the one of the links to release the hook. And maybe I can grab a hold of that up this way. Grab that brad. And these are gonna have to have new. Oh, somebody pinched that one completely shut. That's supposed to be done that way. Okay. 
Okay, that's the long one. take out. That is the oil. And take the bread. And now we're all ready to take the movement out, and that's like four screws. Oh, extra one, five screws. Okay. You know, it might be easier. Hello. Hello? How are you? I'm doing all right. Where's Charlie go? He said he was going into work for a while. Oh, okay. Then he had some work he had to make up, catch up on. Oh, that's right. And I think he said he might have a he might have a meeting, you know, a late meeting tomorrow night. So. Okay. Okay. The boys lost their first two, so they didn't play their third one. Oh well, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he had a good time. And he got a nice looking jersey and. Well, they had fun. That's uh, all. It's a backpack and a. He got like a, yeah. It's weird. It's only half court. They oh, all really? shoot into the same basket. Okay. Three on three. <laughs> No, they don't run. Don't run full court. Uh -uh. They just all. So if they get a rebound, what do they do? They got to take it back or something? No, if they get a rebound, they can keep shooting. I mean, they. they I mean, know. let's say let's say you shoot though, and then the other team gets the rebound. They can shoot right then straight they up can again. Shoot, yeah. They don't have. As usually when you play playground ball, you have to take it back, like beyond the free throw line. Yeah, they have you to know. do that. Like if there's a was a like what would be, what, what, like a foul that doesn't call for shots. Okay. You know. 
So was it easy to find the place then? Yeah, the Siri took us right there. It was even easier coming home because we went clear to that 59 exit and got off. And I've go I we did something at Route 59. I've been I've gotten off on that exit before. Uh-huh. Well, I know I used to go south and go to Fox Valley Mall, but I, I I've done other things there in that area and I can't remember what. But anyway, uh it's real congested there, a lot of traffic on 59 there. Yeah. And we got there just fine. I mean, the instructions, the you know, directions were perfect, and the Siri took us right there too. And uh, oh, I thought the, you said Sarah. Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Siri. Okay. So then, coming home, I just punched in. I just pulled her back up again and punched home. And it said I eighty eight. So I thought, well, would you? Because I couldn't. Re I mean, I wouldn't have remembered going backwards which way to go sure. and what yeah. the streets were. So I just thought, well, we'll follow her. Well, it took us, like the first maybe two miles, it took us back to Route 30 and had us turn left and go west. Well, then it, t it kept us on 30 all the way to Route 47 in Yorkville. Huh. So, or near Yorkville. I guess we were between Aurora and Yorkville somewhere on Route 30 anyway. So then turned on 47 and came down to Wabanti College and got on 88 there. It didn't take us back to that real congested area at all. I was kind of dreading that because that was very, that was like six lanes across and almost like another expressway by itself. So I think we got home a lot, got back out here a lot faster. Cool. Anyway. Did you have lunch or anything? Yeah, we had lunch earlier. Yeah. You want to do something? Do you want to go somewhere? I can cook. Whatever you want. I, I assume Nolan or Charlie will eat somewhere. He's not bringing Lily back tonight. He didn't say, right? Uh, no, I thought tomorrow we we'll just her pick, up. picking yes, her up at that's school. What I think too. Yeah. I can go get. You want me to go get pizza? Or do you want to go later okay. and get ice cream? Do you want to? Uh, how hungry are you? I'm not real hungry. Okay, well, we can wait then and go for ice cream later if you like. Okay. Culver's Unless you really something. want something, no, and we can right now. I mean, get a pizza. Or... Yeah, no. How hungry are you? Not really. Okay. Will you just let me know when you're hungry and we'll go get ice cream? Okay, sounds Culver's good. Culver's is open till 10, or I made it Charlie's shirt iron. But... How about that movement, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? They all throw me, so I don't know how you keep it <laughs> well, straight. Well, if you look at it, here, see it's, there's the fan and one, two, three, or one, one, two, three gears and the fan. That's the quail call. Then there's just three gears for the run side. And then there's three gear or three gears in the fan on the cuckoo side. Oh, I guess I better watch putting my pants too close. It made my leg hot. <laughs> The space heater's been nice, so this has just got to get cleaned. Okay, you put it in the cleaner? Uh, yeah, well, after I take it apart. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going right. to go upstairs and, and I'll probably turn the TV on. This one is really warm. I'm going to iron Charlie's shirts before I get too far behind. Look at this gear here. Oh. Watch. Oh, my goodness. You see the pivot in there flopping back and mm -hmm. forth. The whole gear is just jerking all over. That's that's got to be done. Looks like this one might be a main wheel needs done. I don't know about that. That's pretty bad. So I'll be upstairs. So I'll probably have the TV on. Okay, I'll be right here. Have you got your phone? No. Okay. Okay. Here's the movement. And <coughs> where I see really bad wear is here in the back and in the run side and the time side. If you look at, I don't know if I can get that on the, I'd say it's been a while since this one has been out. You can see a lot of dust on that. 
pretty dirty so we'll check this out you want to look at what this quail movement looks like it's pretty much uh, same thing as we had on the more modern one this is the quail train here and it's uh, kicked off by a lever on the front lever on the front is behind the behind the minute wheel and there's uh, four pins back there they're going to lift on this lever that lever in turn is going to lift a lever inside and also lift this this part like so so that uh, this will trip okay this looks it looks exactly like the railroad clock what well, is railroad clock style uh, interesting it has two pins on the quail side on the warning wheel one for the stop and one for warning so works essentially the same way as the other one we just did so we'll be taking this apart and uh, cleaning it and checking everything out on it uh, take this apart I want to start by well, why don't we just leave that all intact and I'm going to take the... Boy, that's really at an odd angle. Never... You see, those are flat. Hmm. Mm. Boy, that's tight. That's real tight. Man, those are not, that's not an original screw. You can just tell by the looks of it. Okay. And then this should come off. It sits on a pin. This part sits on a pin right here through a hole. And then held with a screw. You kind of got to work that loose. Maybe the other side off. Let's see. Oh, that's been that's been rebushed and rebushed pretty poorly. Bush is sticking way, way out of the of the hole. It's never a good idea to make the bushing too big. Otherwise, uh, pivots will wear down into things. Alright, before we dismantle these parts, we take a look at the relative position. One, I've pushed this into lock position, the cuckoo side. You notice that this lever is in a slot on a count wheel, right here. And if we look inside, we'd see there is a there's a cam in there with a brass lever on it and it's in a notch on that cam and there is a pin on this second wheel, third wheel that ha is up against the protrusion on that brass cam so that's in the stopped position okay, or locked position we also want to take note of where the pins are on the main wheel so that when we put this back together we don't have these levers for the cuckoo uh, lifted halfway up or what have you and as I look at it what we have to do is we have to have a space between two of the pins on that wheel and that main wheel 
facing the outside. That way the two cuckoos will be in just exactly, the cuckoo lovers will be in exactly the right position. And uh, so we've got a space facing out between two pins on that main wheel. We have the brass lever in the notch of the cam. When, well, this doesn't matter so much the count wheel because we can adjust that even after the movement's put back together. The third wheel, the pin, is up against the end of the brass lever, and that's all we have to have to put it back together and have it in proper time sequence. And if we look at the quail side, we have the same thing. We have an odd looking, uh, odd looking count wheel here because it's broken, actually it looks like it's broken into three segments. One, two, three, one, two, three, or maybe just, yeah, it's got to be, that's odd, three segments, yeah, and we got three pins. So this is, uh, we have to check this out. And we have the same arrangement over here. When this is in its stopped position, then the, one of the, this lever is going to be down into a slot on the count wheel. The brass lever in here is going to be into a notch on a brass cam. And the pin on the uh, warning wheel is going to be in a stopped position. And Okay, there's the stop position here. Click into position. This will trip it again. Okay, and that's what we got to have there. Those have to be lined up. So we're all set to take this apart and, and uh, do an initial cleaning so we can see what's worn and what isn't. Uh, what we got to do first, we have to dismantle. The motion works on the front. There is a pin that holds the intermediate gear. That uh, the, on the front you have the intermediate gear, you have the hour tube here, and on, inside of that you have the minute hand. So we and this intermediate gear is what gears it down 12 to 1 minutes to hours. had to use a stake or punch and a hammer get that loose. We won't be putting that one back in. What on earth did they use? That should be a tapered pin. Anyway, there's a washer that goes on there. And then once you get that washer off, that allows this gear to slide out the washer keeps this from coming off. There's the hour tube. There's the minute. And you see on the back there's four pins. That's what raises the quail every 15 minutes. And let me look at that under the magnifier here. And is that dirty? They're not worn. Okay, once you have that off, then the intermediate gear comes right off. And under that intermediate gear is a tension washer. That is what acts as a clutch to allow you to move the, the hands to set the time. So here then is the lever that lifts every 15 minutes to cause the quail to operate. And on the back, this lever, kind of unique, is what operates on the half hour an hour to trip the cuckoo after the quail is done. And it does the same kind of thing on that side. So there you can kind of see how that works. A little, a little heftier. Uh, piece of equipment than just a wire. Looking from the back, our quail is on the right, cuckoo's on the left, 
There's an interesting piece here that you might like to see. Something that was on that other railroad clock of mine. You see in very small letters there it says uh, Sears Roebuck and Company. And under, under that in very, very tiny letters, I think it just says Germany. Yes, it does. We'll look at that later. Okay, so we need to start taking this apart. Goodness, this has, this has six pillars in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, nicely constructed. Okay, and looking at this quail count wheel, uh, it's actually divided into thirds. Right now it's in, it has just finished quailing the four calls for the hour. And then it, the next one will be the quarter hour, half hour, three quarter, then hour. And the hour then has a pin. Need a quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour, and a pin. Quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour, hour, and a pin. So, what this means is one turn of this wheel will take place every three hours. So it takes three hours for this to turn once, which means then that these pins are only in play once an hour which means this lever gets lifted only once once an hour and what that means then is that uh, the cuckoo is not going to call on the half hour it's only going to call on the hour and if we take a look at the at the count wheel on the cuckoo side that's pretty much verified there, too. If it was calling the half hour, this would be a much wider slot. There'd have to be a wide enough slot for it to drop in to stop at the hour and then stop at the half hour. So this movement does not cuckoo on the half hour. It only cuckoos on the hour. But it will call, the quail will call once on the quarter hour, twice on the half hour, three times on the three quarter hour, and four times on the hour, followed by the cuckoo calling out the number of hours. I think what we'll do here is we'll start taking some of this off. We'll take the count wheel off of the count wheel off for the quail. It's held on by a shouldered screw. That shouldered screw allows this to turn without the screw tightening it all down. And we can work that gear out of there. So there's your quail count wheel. And you can see the three pins on it. And that raises, and there are three segments, identical segments, around that uh, uh, then call the quarter hours. All right. To move that, to move that uh, count wheel, we have a small gear here that's held on with a pin. And I gotta look and see if that's a tapered pin. Yes. So I'm going to try to, it may have a hard time getting this one out too because they've been in here for years and years and years. Mm, I may have some trouble getting that pin out of there. Okay, I was able to get that loose finally. At least partial. There we go. Pulled the pin. Alright, and then this should come off. That's on there awfully tight, so we'll see. Well, we'll have to take it off after we get the plates apart. There is also now a small gear that holds the, that runs the uh, 
count wheel on the cuckoo side and it's also held on with a little uh, tapered pin and I hope I can get that out. It's been a while since the threads on here have been turned. Ooh, that is still tight. Also a shouldered screw. And there's the count wheel for the cuckoo side. Now we got to see if we can get that tapered pin out of there. Having a drill I think in there to get that out. That's right, we'll get that out after we get this apart. I want to make a note now of the order these levers go back in so I know. So we have the, on the cuckoo side, we've got the brass lever. We've got the lift lever that's from the then we've got the hammer and we've got the left bellow lift that's the short one and then we have the right bellow And on the other side, on the quail side, the levers from top to bottom are the bellow lever, because there's only one bellow for the quail. And we've got the brass lever. And then we got the hammer. Uh, just to uh, help in reassembling what we got to do with those. Okay, release that spring. Release this spring. Maybe. That's some thin wire. Okay. There we go. Alright, then we gotta look and see. Where did they put? Oh, they just got a very thin brass. Thin brass spring that's holding the brass lever in. Uh, they've got that completely tied around up here on the shoulder. I may end up having to make new springs for these. Alrighty, the hand shaft is threaded on, just to get it out of the way I can unscrew it, okay, that gets that out of the way. Alright, now we can come back here, 
Hello. And we're going to. Oh my goodness. fun because those our wheels are not going to come out. Main wheels aren't going to come out. Oh, it has been a while since these plates have been apart. It's been a long time. That gunk in there is acting like glue. Oh. struggle. Um, I've got to try to get these levers out of here. Well, I've never seen cuckoo levers held in that way. They've got, it looks like I have a pin thrown. Oh, darn. I may not be able to get these out. Well, I guess I'm going to come out this way. Same one put together like this. Huh. You see those pins are only on one side of the arbor. Well, I have to continue to mess around with this until I can see a way to get these apart. Cuckoo out. Slides past those pins. Hammer. No, that's not going to come out either. Hmm. Is that a drift pin in there? Boy, that is really weird. I think I want to mess with those. But right now, I'm just going to leave them in there. That is the oddest construction I've seen in one of these. That's exactly what they are. They're just pins that are put in there. Then these can slide. Once you get the pin out, these can slide. Yeah, they can slide until they get to a, a narrowed spot in the shaft and then it comes out. I've never seen one like that. Now the hammer, once those are other out, we can just ro rotate that that pin lines up with the slot and then they can be pulled out. Well, maybe it can be pulled out. What on earth is going on there? There we go. Okay. Hmm. That is really strange. Never saw that before. So to get this lever out, I've got to pull this pin so then I can, because this is tapered, this won't just come out this way. You gotta pull that pin. I called it a bad name. Anyway, once that pin is pulled, then this can be slid over and slipped right out. And again, when we get to the hammer though, alright. Hammer has a 
spring. I can turn this, bring this out the slot. No, oh, that doesn't have a does that have a slot? Yeah, it does. And that comes right out. Okay. Okay, so then we have one pin left here to take out to get the front lever off. This could be a real nasty thing to put back together. Okay, pull the pin. that to go down far enough to get to that shallow spot and we can get it out. Well, there we go. Okay. And now let's take the bird perches out. Smokes. These screws are put on by Godzilla. Okay. Taking a bird perch off here. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the condition and see how absolutely dirty this plate is. You see how dirty this plate is. That's pretty bad. Okay. Here's chain wheel. Doesn't appear to be badly worn. I can't believe that they put as thick a ratchet wheel on there as they did. And it was such a thin click. But that's what they did. Okay, this is the motion, or the uh, time train. So there's the main wheel. Here's the second wheel. Take a look at uh, lantern pinions, pivots, everything. And then here is the escape wheel. some idea. It's been a very, very long time since this has had anything done with it. Now let's just take a look by putting these gears in here. that uh, 
set together. And we can see the main wheel and uh, didn't appear badly worn. Second wheel. Very, very, very badly worn. And the escape wheel. It's worn. On the other side, main wheel. Not bad. Second wheel. Yeah. And the escape wheel. Not bad. Okay, so we got a couple, at least two, three bushings there. But first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to clean this. Uh, if we look at the rest of the wheels in this, you can see how very, very dirty they are. Very, very dirty. A uh, little bit of rust on some of it. Very dirty. And then, of course, on the this is the cuckoo side. You know, same thing. A lot of dirt. Not much play in that. A little thinner ratchet on that one. Again, the gears are very, very, very dirty. Look at this one. You have some idea how bad that is. And then on the quail side. Yeah, we have. Okay, this gear's not bad. Dirty. clean these before we proceed. Okay, here's our first cleaning. Here are the parts from the quail side, from the cuckoo side, and from the runs. And uh, you can see these certainly look a lot better than they did before. Nice and clean. Plates are nice and clean. Now the next thing that we need to do is when I teach you take each of these wheels and we'll put them in a the lathe and we'll polish the pivots. Once we polish the pivots then we will put each train in one at a time and check for where and see where we need to uh, rebush. Okay, we're not gonna, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you very briefly how pivots are polished. Um, I'm not going to do every one on video, but I'll show you quickly. We'll put it into the lathe. We use some polishing sticks. Now we polish those pivots.
first thing we've done now is we've put the run train in. That's the time train. And what we're going to do now is we're going to check for pivot wear. And the way we do that is we just grab that main wheel, we move it back and forth, and we look at the pivots. And as you can see, the pivot in that second wheel above is going back and forth really bad. And as is the escape gear. So this pivot and this pivot hole will have to be rebushed. The main wheel looks to be in good shape. When we look at the other side, we do the same thing. Now this one's a little harder to see because it's a little deeper pivot, but the second wheel definitely needs repivoting as well in this spot. And the escape gear too. So we need to do four pivots. Um, so four bushings are going to be put into those into those. Right, looking at the rear plate, the number two wheel, that hole, I think it's pretty clear to see that it's it's worn oval and that the wear is over to the right side. So what we need to do is we need to file the unworn side an equal amount to what's on the worn side. And the reason for that is when we put a drill or a reamer in there, if we don't even out the wear on both sides, then the drill or reamer will tend to be pulled to the right and drill the hole that we're going to put in here off center. And that's going to cause a mismatch of gears. So we want the reamer to find true center when we do that. So we're going to file out that worn part, or that unworn part. Okay, in this case it's such a small hole, the file is giving me difficulty, so I have some diamond grinding bits and I'll put a very thin one in there and I will grind this out with diamond bits. Now when we look at this, we should see that we have an even amount of wear on both sides. Now when I use the reamer to ream that out, that will give me a nice centered hole. So what I need to do now is find out what <coughs> what size bushing I'm going to have to have for that. All right, this is the side it goes in, right there. And need to measure the size of that pivot. And we do that in millimeters. I use a caliper to do that. I find that that pivot is one point, well, 1.2 millimeters. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to look at my bushings. <coughs> and just to start checking, I've got some bushings that are 1.25 millimeters. I just want to do a quick check on that and see if uh, how that will deal with because they're only two hundredths of a millimeter off. And I think that will work pretty well. So we'll use 1.25 
because once we press that in, it's going to compress it just a tiny bit anyway. So now for 1.25 millimeter bore, the outside diameter is 3 millimeters. And so I need to get a reamer that's going to, I can drill out that uh, size hole, just slightly smaller actually, that's just three millimeters I need. The reamer that I'm going to use is 2.97. 2 and here's a 2.97 reamer. Let me see the number on that. Let's set this aside. So we'll leave that there. And I will now put the reamer into my drill. And we're going to drill out that hole. So now we have a 2.97 hole, and I'll take a block, put it down here, and from the inside, the first thing I want to do before I do that is I want to just chamfer that hole. Just slightly. Take the burr off and to make it easier to get the bushing started. I'm going to take the forceps and I'll take that bushing. Let's see what side is down. Okay. I place that on the hole. I take a little hammer. And we pound that in. And now that's flush. And we now have a new hole in there that the pivot going to go into. And it's just slightly snug now even though it was tight before. So I think what I'll do now is I gotta get a I'll use a I try a smoothing brooch first because it's very close to being tight. And uh, we'll broach that hole just a little bit. And we'll first try just putting a smoothing brooch in there. See how that works. And that's good. Now we got a nice pivot. What I want to do before I do anything again, I want to go with this chamfering tool. Just break the edge on that bushing. Okay, that's it. And now we have to rebush the front plate for the other pivot. We'll do it in exactly the same way. Okay, now that I have both of those bushings redone, we put the gear two gears back in. We see that they mesh just fine. Everything runs good. Look, we got end shake. That means this will move back and forth somewhat. And now if we look and I hold this, we'll see that 
There's no flopping there. And there's no movement there. So we don't have that thing flopping back and forth now. And now we have a bushing in there that will wear for a very, very long time. And now we're just going to continue with that with all the others that are going to need to be done. We'll check that out. Okay, so now we have all the bushings put in the time train. The gears mesh nicely. And every one of them has end shake. They're supposed to have. And they run freely. Run very freely. So now that that train is done. So now we have to put in the uh, this will be the cuckoo side. This is the quail side. Now we have to do the same thing with the the other uh, the other trains. Okay, we have the quail train in now, and the only one I can see that's really worn is the second wheel pivot here on the front. So we'll replace that one. The others are all all pretty tight. Only one on this train. I just discovered something on this wheel. This uh, this been worked on before, and the pivot has been replaced in this one. It's got a very strange looking shoulder sticking up there. I may have to put this in the lathe and smooth that out a little bit, but. That definitely has been drilled out and a piece put into it. I don't know if you can see that very clearly there, but I'm not sure what it looks like to me. It's like the shoulder is undercut. Either that or somebody did a really poor job of working on this before, but I think that's been drilled out and a, and a new pivot put into it. Shouldn't look like that. Nor should this one. Those are really rough looking shoulders. Okay, and there's that, uh, there's that bushing redone now. As you can see, it's not, not flopping around like it was before. This nice fit and putting the wheels back in. It meshes nicely, turns nicely, got in shake. Everything's fine on that one. Now we do the cuckoo side. Looking at the cuckoo side wheel, uh, some kind of craziness going on here too. Somebody has in the past has repivoted and look how they secured that in there. They peened it there, peened it there, peened it there, peened it there. So that's had a that's had a new pivot put in it too. But somebody did a really lousy job of fitting. And I cannot believe that that's how they secured the pivot in there, by pounding the daylights out of it. That's what you call lousy workmanship. All right, on the cuckoo side, the uh, second wheel on the front needs to be done. Third wheel's not too bad. On the back, looks like third wheel. Yeah, 
third wheel needs done. Second wheel's a little tiny bit. I don't know. I wouldn't do that one. That one, though, is tunneling under that deep uh, bushing. Yeah. Third wheel on the back, second wheel on the front. We're also going to do the first wheel on the front. Okay. Cuckoo side is now bushed. Things run nice and smoothly. Nothing seems worn. Put a total of seven bushings in the movement. So now we're ready to see if we can get her back together. <coughs> now we peg out all these holes with toothpick. That's why. Okay, after a number of fits and starts, I'm finally getting it pretty much back together. Um, getting these levers in here is almost uh, drives you crazy. They have to go back in almost a very specific order. On this side, you have to have the hammer put in before you uh, put the plates together. The same with the little brass lever. Then you can work this one in and uh, then on the other side you got to have the hammer in but then the this lever has to go in next then the brass lever and then finally the lift for the for the uh, bellows on the quail side and uh, it's just peculiar how these go together there's a little groove cut there in these things that uh, gives you clues to which ones have to go in first anyway you get these levers aligned where you need them get that started that way uh, and then these will slip into the hole locks in place and then you have to put a pin in here to keep it from sliding back out uh, I've never seen one put together quite like this it's uh, really kind of a pain in the neck one of the hardest ones I've ever had to put back together Okay, here's the lever that will trip the quail. There are four pins on the back of the minute shaft. Each one of those representing every 15 minutes. It goes on. Then we have a tension washer that goes on here. And we have a intermediate wheel gears things down and then the power shaft goes on and then we'll put a washer on here and we'll keep the hour hand from coming or hour from coming off and we have to put a pin in there have the pin in there Care of that. We're all set. <coughs> all right, this movement works exactly the same way as the one I've done and showed in another video on quail cuckoo clocks. 
We have a lever that is raised every 15 minutes. And that does two things. It lifts this brass lever, unhooking it from a cam inside. It makes that brass lever right on top of the cam. It also uh, raises a pin to move in the way of a pin on the, uh, it raises a lever to move in the way of a pin on the warning wheel. And so the, the movement goes first into warning and then it runs and then shuts back off. Fifteen minutes later it does it again. Now we got to put a lever in here that will trip the cuckoo. Uh, this particular clock does not cuckoo on the half hour, it only cuckoos on the hour. So you get one call of the quail at 15 minutes, two calls at half hour, three calls, three quarter hour, four calls on the hour, and then the cuckoo will, will call out the, the hour, the number of hours. So we still have a couple more pieces to put on here. Okay, everything back together. Oh. And there is that stamp on the back. Here's this quail sign. There's the lever then that trips the cuckoo sign. And here is the front, all cleaned, seven new bushings in it, things straightened out, and now we'll have to see if it works. Okay, we have the movement mounted in the case now, and about all I can do now until we get leather for the bellows. running. I uh, gotta get Cuckoo's bellows done. Alright, let's go to the quarter hour. Half hour. Warning. Run. Three-quarter hour. Warning. Run. And finally the hour. Warning. Run. Okay, all he needs the bellows.